Well, why are we here surrounded by authorities again? Why are we here, officers? I'll tell you why. Because the city of Calgary has shut down our church illegally with a cunning loss. And because of their actions, many people are hurting right now. We have been feeding the poor for the past 21 years. For the past 21 years, we were assisting them with necessities of life. And then the government, in their wisdom, came and gave me a $1,200 ticket for assisting the needs of the poor. Shame on the police. Shame on the government. Shame on the mayor of this city and shame on the premier. Because on one hand, they are telling you on TV that they appreciate the Christians doing the charity. In another hand, they're hunting down the preachers that actually do, free of charge, what they say we all should be doing. Hypocrisy at the highest levels. Hypocrisy. That's nothing new under the sun. The Bible is very clear from the very beginning to the very end. People will be corrupted. People will be haters of what's good. That's why I am here. I am here to assess the needs of my parishioners. As a pastor, I am here to let the people know that this virus will go away. Like any other flu, it will go away. Like any other disease and any other sickness, it will go away. But the damage, the damage that the lockdown is doing and the damage of shutting down churches is going to send many people to hell. As a pastor, as a reverend, as a chaplain, I have obligation to preach the truth and feed the poor. The government may say one thing, but my God is saying something totally different. The Bible says, feed the poor. Feed the poor. Feed the poor. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Do not reject people. Embrace them and love them. Embrace them, officers, and love them. Don't hate the poor just because they don't have what you have. And that's my job, and I always thought that's your job as well. To serve and protect. The very moment police officers change their colors from white and blue to black, I knew change is coming. I've seen this in history with the Nazis how they changed their colors into black and they just added SS on the top of it. Something is changing, we know. We know that the enemy hates the truth, enemy hates what's good and righteous. We know that. We knew many years that that's what's coming. But it's still very sad to see it with your own eyes. I grew up under communist dictatorship. I've seen it firsthand, the power of the wicked. In the end of the day, everyone was crying, including the villains. In the end of the day, officers, you're just a tool in the hands of the devil. You're just a tool in the hands of the mayor, which is a wicked, evil man. Where is your mayor today? Where is he hiding, this coward? In a time of emergency, the politicians should be serving the poor. They should be serving the poor. In a time of crisis, the politicians should be at the front line, assisting, helping, saving, not hiding like rats. Shame on them. Shame on the leaders in this country. Shame on Trudeau. Where is he hiding? In which cottage is he hiding? Telling us, stay home, don't go out, and he himself Take a family, he takes a family to a vacation. Shame on him, shame on them. And if you're assisting them, shame on you as well. 
I don't care about your pride on your vehicles. I love the police when it said serve and protect. Serve, serve whom? Serve whom? The fat big politicians or the people that elected them and pay your salaries? Everything is upside down. We know this is the end of times. We know that the politicians are going to get wicked by the minute, more evil. But today, still, we can say those few words and remind all you great Canada that there is a living God that watches everything you do. We are here. I'm here. I can't speak for everybody else, but I am here to remind you that for everything you've done and everything you said, you will be accountable for. Everything. Every word. You will stand before the creator of heavens and the earth and you will be accounted for. There is coming a time of reckoning. There is coming a time when every man will stand before the living God. Woe to you. Woe to you politicians. When you stand before him. Woe to you officers if you done evil, if you abuse your power over the poor and the small. Woe to you. Woe to you. Hell is not a temporary place. It's not five minutes in a bathtub. Hell is forever. And every man that rejected this word will end up there. Don't be a fool that says in his heart there is no God. Don't be a fool that says in his heart I'm not accountable for my actions. Can you hold? The wind is... Uh... I want to read to you a story from the Bible you can find in Mark. Mark 10, verse 46. It's a famous story, and I'm sure if you went to church, you've heard it. It's proper for the times we're living in. Then came... Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began shout, Jesus! Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me! He began to shout when he saw Jesus Christ, Jesus, son of David, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. If Canada only had that kind of a heart, if you would go to your knees and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. I've done terrible things. I've done wicked things. But the people around this man, this blind man, were saying, shut up. Don't do church. Don't feed the poor. Be quiet. Go home and die. Stay in your basement. Don't assist the need of the poor. Be quiet, they said to this man. But he understood something the Canadians do not understand that Jesus had the answer for his problems. The people around him were saying, don't speak, don't say a word, but he knew inside his heart that Jesus had the answer to his problems. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus replied, what do you want me to do for you? 
or Canada, or oh, beautiful great nation, what do you want Jesus to do for you? You want this crisis to go away? Why would God take this crisis away from you? Why? For all the murder of the children? 450 children every single week slaughtered, murdered in your cities. Why would he take this away? For the marijuana stores that are still open? For the liquor stores? So you can get drunk and high? And keep screwing around others? So there will be more abortions? Why would he stop this calamity of oh, Canada? Why? You see, this man, this blind man, humbled himself before the living God. He humbled himself and he said, Jesus, I'm ready to receive your miracle. Canada, are you ready to receive your miracle? I don't think so. I think the politicians are getting more wicked by the minute, more evil. There is no repentance in the land. There is no crying out, Jesus help us, Jesus changes, Jesus I repent. I turn away from my wicked ways. The media are liars, the politicians are corrupted, and the people, well people, people of Canada are uninterested in the living God. So sad. When I came here in 1995, this was a different nation. This was a different nation. What happened to you, Canada? How far you have fallen from the living God of Canada? That you think that church services are unessential. How far you have fallen while your forefathers buried the Bible in a foundation of this city hall to remind the future generations that this city was built on the Word of God. Oh, how far you have fallen! And you think that you can do this without consequences forever? Show me an empire. Empire that defied the living God. Where is Roman Empire? Where are the Babylonians? Where are the Persians? Where are the Nazis? Where are they? Everyone that raises his hands against the living God is asking for trouble and trouble came to this nation. You wanted the trouble? Here it is. You wanted the trouble? Here it is. Enjoy it. Because this is just the beginning. More, more, far more things are coming. Bartimaeus understood who God was. And he wanted to see. Oh, I wish the Canadians would like to see again. I wish the Canadian politicians would ask Jesus, open our eyes so we can see. Jesus, open my eyes. Open my eyes so I can see again. Jesus showed mercy towards Bartimaeus. The blind man received what he asked God. The gift to see was given to him because he was a humbled man. He humbled himself and he received his freedom. My prayer to you, Canada, is this. Humble yourself. Turn away from your wicked ways. Go to your knees. Go to your knees and say, God, forgive us. Forgive us for walking away from you. Forgive us for despising your commandments. What happened to us Canadians? Nothing is holy anymore. Seven days a week we go to work. We don't respect the holy days. Why do we call them holy days? Have you ever asked yourself that? Holy days? That means consecrated, given to God. Holy days for Him. Not for your stupid shoppings. 
Not so you can go and buy more stupid things that you don't need, but to wait and marvel at his creation, to stop for a second and give glory to the one that has given you life. To stop for a second and say, God, you are an amazing God. You've created me and you've created everything that there is around me. You are an amazing God. I give you all the glory for everything. All the glory. All the honor. I, I'm telling you people. I'm telling you. If you would do that, God would restore this nation. Believe me, if you humble yourself before the living God, He's going to give you politicians that will love you. He's going to give you business back. He's going to give you officers that will care for you. Because there will be back fear of the Lord in our communities, in our schools. The children will respect you. The people will honor you. But we have to come back, come back to the Word of God. We have to come back to the Word of God. Amen. This nation has to come back to the living God. Amen. If you will not do it, I'm telling you this is just the beginning. In 2005, officer knows, I prophesied. And I said, God spoke to me. I was at the steps of the city hall. This country is like this never-ending renovation out there. Never-ending renovation of City Hall. I remember he told me I'm going to touch their oil because their oil has become their idol. It's all about the money in this country now. I'm going to take away their oil. I'm going to take away their money because they're worshipping mammon instead of worshipping me. Nothing is holy anymore. They are selling children, they are murdering children for money in abortion clinics. I'm going to take away their money. And I was laughed at. Who can touch our oil? Who can touch our oil industry? Where is your oil today? Where is your economy today? I remember I was saying about floodings, earthquakes, Tornadoes that will come in different places. 2012, remember the flooding? I said it's coming and I was laughed at. Did you enjoy your downtown underwater? Billions of dollars wasted. I remember Calgary Stampede Parade. We were kicked out because they said the name of Jesus offends people. Where is your Calgary Stampede Parade? Where is your Calgary Stampede as a whole shut down? See, God can do whatever He wants. Be careful. Who are you insulting? Be careful because that virus, it's a double-edged sword. It can bite you in the back. Be careful. Because you're not going to live forever. Oh, Mr. Ninshi, be careful. Wherever you're hiding, you're not going to live forever. Oh, Mr. Trudeau, you can go to vacations, but you're not going to live forever. One day you will face my God. One day you will be accountable for what you have done to this nation. So you can escape the human justice with corrupted officers, corrupted politicians, corrupted judges, but you cannot escape the judgment of the living God. He knows your deeds. He's not happy. He is not happy with this nation. The blind man received his sight. He greatly rejoiced because God answered his prayer. Canada, if you want God to answer your prayer, turn your hearts back to Him. Turn your hearts back to Him. He will restore you. 
He will raise you up as an example of a godly and righteous nation. A nation that loves God. And we have 10,000 different reasons to love Him. Look at our mountains, the most beautiful on the planet Earth. Look at our lakes, our oceans. Look at our forests, our wild animals. This God is an amazing God. His word to be praised. His word to be worshipped. Wordy, wordy, wordy is the Lord Almighty. The one that was slain but is alive. Wordy, wordy, wordy is the Lord Almighty. To Him you should serve. To Him you should give glory. If you don't, if you don't, I'm telling you, worse things are coming. And you will not like it. More diseases will come. This is not over. More viruses will come. This is just the beginning of great sorrows. God spoke to me years ago. He said, do you think your lineups are big? They will be 10 times, 20 times bigger. There will be such a big lineup for food, you won't see the end of it. Like during the Great Depression. But this one will be even greater. The arrogant and proudful said, I will never lose my job. Millions of Canadians within a few weeks lost their jobs. If God could shut down your economy, ha, you think he cannot do it even more? I would be afraid if I was on the wrong side of that fence. Jump from the fence, jump on the side of God, live, don't die. Be blessed, be healed, be raised up again. As a child of the living God, if you remain on the fence or you will be on the wrong side, it will crush you. It will destroy you. That's why people are on antidepressants. That's why they go and buy drugs, legal and illegal. That's why they need to drink themselves to death. Because they have no joy, no hope, no future. Don't be them. Be me. You don't see me terrified. You don't see me afraid. See, ambulance is going. There is someone in need. There is someone of need of assistance. That's Canada. The whole nation needs assistance right now. And not physical, not money. You don't need more money. You need God. You need God back in your schools. You need God back in politicians political arena. You need God back in police service, bylaw service. I'll leave you with this. We're going to start singing again. Larry, if you can come, bless you. And remember, I have been warning you for many, many years and you were not willing to listen. I beg you, listen today. I pray you would listen today. You didn't want to listen 15 years ago when I warned you. Ten years ago where I keep when I was keep warning you, please listen today. Be blessed. And remember, in the end of the days, God loves you. He died for you, He rose from the grave for you. For you, just for you. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to live and not just have a life. We are better than white tails in the mountains. We are better than dogs and cats. We have been called for something more than just existing. We're called to live, live, live. Have a life, don't be a walking dead zombie. And that you can only achieve with the living God in your heart. Be blessed.